Thank you for talking with us. Take us through Tuesday morning. Yeah, Tuesday was certainly a challenging day um, in the district, in particular at the middle school. So um, right around 7 a.m., maybe a little before, a teacher um, went into one of the lower-level bathrooms and saw some writing on the wall that contained um, a presumed threat um, to the building, referenced a potential uh, sh school shooting. He did the right thing, immediately uh, notified the administration, um, and um, Principal Kelher uh, called me. We jumped on a conference call with um, Chief McQuaid. And uh, we had about a six-minute window. Um, buses had rolled. Uh, we had some buses that had already queued up, um, waiting to drop students off in front of the building. And we had this really limited window to make a decision about what to do. Um, you know, was it, a, uh, was it a credible threat? Still kind of a question that really can't ever be answered, but we didn't think it was credible. But we really, in, in today's day and age, we sort of have to err on the side of caution. So we made the quick decision to just close the building for the day and effectively turn the buses around. Um, we just felt we needed time to process the situation, um, to give us time to plan for a potential reentry uh, and plan for a way to make sure the building was safe for students to return. So that was really the the quick and dirty explanation, but it was a very tiny window where we had to make a decision. And, you know, in hindsight, I think we made a great decision. We had uh, kind of smart, experienced people um, who were weighing in, and um, you know, here we are today. Being a superintendent, especially on snow days and, and on days like yesterday, kind of like being a football coach, everyone is second-guessing them. I was on social media yesterday. I was on it last night, and people questioning why the high school wasn't closed. That's right next door. Uh, why the students had to wait on buses for so long. I mean, you can't make everyone happy. No, and honestly, um, that kind of is what it is. I mean, that's kind of the nature of today's, um, especially with social media and today's society, where people are second guessing. And it's fine, you know, we're subject as public officials to second guessing. Um, I still think we made the right call. And again, we're we're not making these decisions in a vacuum, right? We have law enforcement, we have experienced administration. Um, as far as the high school, you commented on that. This the threat was specific to the middle school. There wasn't an active shooter threat. There wasn't a, um, a imminent danger by any stretch of the imagination. So we felt that it was just important to have a business as usual and then address the issue at the middle of school. As far as the buses, I mean, we were making a decision uh, as the buses were pulling in. So, um, you know, the cavalier thing would have been to let, let the students off the buses and let them get into the building. We wanted to do the responsible thing. I have to say, I'm sort of unapologetic about making those kind of decisions. I mean, student safety is of paramount importance. If there's some inconvenience, there's some inconvenience. We really felt that we made the decision that was in the best interest of keeping students and staff and our residents safe. I can't imagine if you had let the students in school operate in a normal day and even one student was injured, what the reaction would have been. Right, and that's why, again, you know, that, that's why you just have to make these really tough decisions and maybe take extreme measures. Uh, maybe we wouldn't have done it 20 years ago, but today, you know, uh, school safety is number one. It's the number one priority of every school administrator in the country. And school shootings, it's not an abstract concept anymore. Uh, it really isn't. Um, you know, God forbid, you know, hopefully it never happens here in North Attleboro, but we're going to do everything in our power um, to make sure our students are safe. And if we have to take drastic decisions, we're going to do that. And then finally, I know you can't get into details of the investigation, North Attleboro Police, State Police. I saw cars from the sheriff's office there yesterday. Uh, are there cameras in the, in the school? Is there a chance this person might be caught? Yeah, yeah, potentially. So let me just say, I do want to back up and, and give credit to the North Attleboro Police Department, as well as other regional agencies, State Police, Sheriff's Office. We have such an incredible partnership with the North Attleboro Police Department. They were... I can't express to you how helpful they were and how important it is to have that partnership, that school police department relationship. It just makes makes a response that much more professional, efficient, and honestly su successful. So credit to Chief McQuaid and his team. They're, they're amazing. Um, short answer um, about cameras. Yes, we have, we're have. we very lucky. We actually just tripled the amount of cameras that we have on the middle and high school campus just this summer. So we, we, don't, we do know. Um, for the most part, who, who was in that hallway, who had access to that bathroom, and that's sort of where we started yesterday. Um, and I can't really give you specifics, but we, uh, the police department interviewed um, 
multiple dozens of students uh, yesterday uh, in the aftermath of the incident. I hope we I hope we ultimately catch the student. We haven't yet, um, but it's just it's not a joke. It's not funny. Um, and if, if we do catch the perpetrator, the student will be disciplined to the full extent of the law and likely will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. It's just no, it's not, school security is just not a, it's not a laughing matter.